All right, guys, welcome to uh, our webinar. This is uh, LinkedIn and Facebook ads done right. So we're gonna show you guys how you can get started on these platforms and get results. Um, if you guys have never done Facebook ads before, in the chat, if you guys could just put a plus one in, I really just kind of want to know if you guys have never done Facebook ads. Um, and that'll give us, give me a good clue as to maybe some stuff to, to, to touch on. And then if you've never done LinkedIn ads, put in like a plus two. So that again, will give us a little bit of a, little bit of a clue on, on how to get, how to get you guys started. Yeah, there we go. Thank you all so much. Perfect. All right. All right, so let's um, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. A lot of people here. Muhammad's done both. There you go, Muhammad. Um, so real quick, just the formalities and the intros were uh, Gorilla 76. We're an industrial marketing agency. We help industrial companies with their content strategy, demand generation, marketing operations, and really just help you guys get more business through marketing. So I'm Matt. Julian's drinking and rehydrating, and uh, we're <laughs> we're gonna die. <laughs> Are oh, you gonna let me intro? Yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself. All right, so uh, yeah, my name is Julian. Um, I've been a gorilla for coming up on three years. I'm a strategist here, so just helping clients do exactly what we say here, just helping manufacturers generate new business through marketing. Done a lot of LinkedIn ads and a lot of Facebook ads and just learned a lot in the past couple of years. So hopefully share some good insights today. All right, all right, so let's go and dive right in. Um, so we're gonna cover Facebook versus LinkedIn, how they're alike and how they are different because I don't think you should approach both ad platforms quite the same. There's a different set of expectations that come with each. We'll go over some common missteps, the kind of ads that we think you should run. Again, you will run different advertisements for both platforms um, in some cases, in some instances. And there's gonna be some cases here where LinkedIn's not gonna be a good fit for you or Facebook's not gonna be a good fit for you. And so we'll, we'll kind of cover some of those scenarios as well. Then we're gonna go over basic setup, targeting, creative best practices, and then going through some analysis. Um, we'll do that on Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, we're actually gonna go live in the tool to do both of those. Then we'll talk a little about spend, final thoughts, no surprise they're gonna revolve around strategy. And then we'll take your questions. Um, we'll answer as we'll answer them in as much depth as possible. Again, we're good in these ad platforms, but I wouldn't call either of us experts. So we'll, we'll give you as much guidance as we can, or if you don't have the answer, we can recommend people for you. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so Facebook versus LinkedIn ads. Um, this is actually a question because it's depending on what your company does or how much your product costs, um, you may actually have a better fit for one or the other. So the biggest thing is where can you reach your audience best? Now on LinkedIn, that's going to be a lot easier because you can really target people by industry and by job title uh, much easier. You can do that in Facebook and I'll show you guys how to do that. Facebook is obviously gonna be cheaper um, sometimes a lot cheaper. Um, and so there's just a trade-off of how much you're willing to spend to do advertising on LinkedIn versus Facebook. Always, you're going to want to test both and compare the results. Um, so I would honestly try to go after both audiences and both platforms with an equal amount of money and see if you like your results on one versus the other. And then as you see results come in, max out for a more efficient channel, but I would never abandon the other one after you know just one test. You may find over time, that one platform is going to work a lot better for you than the other. I don't think that means you should abandon the other platform. I just think you should find the formula that will work for you on that other platform. In some ways, I think you have to try to be in both if you can. Um, you may be limited by budget or sometimes your audience just may not be there, but I think all things being equal, you should certainly try. Do anything to add to that, Julian? Nope, that was good. Uh, all right, let's roll. All right, so common ad missteps. So I think the biggest issue with people building audiences is um, you build your audience too big. So it's a good practice to me. I, I always think of it in, in this regard. Think about your big industry trade show. Everyone here who works is in the industrial sector probably, you all have your big trade show, right? So your big trade show probably gets 40,000 people maybe at best, the biggest trade show maybe in your space, 50,000. So think about, you know, does the, Will will you get like can can you build an audience of like forty thousand of four hundred thousand people like you, you're not going to have ten x your audience on Facebook that you would at your trade show so I think building an audience of that size in LinkedIn or in Facebook is a recipe for disaster it's a way to it's a way to 
waste a lot of money targeting people who probably aren't good fits for your company. So my best practice for audience building is 25,000 to 100,000 tops. I usually try to be more in the 75,000 range. Um, and then use that audience as my starting point. If I really like my results, then you can use some other tricks to try to increase your audience size. But uh, I would, uh, that's where I would definitely start. And the other thing is you can go smaller than 25,000 too, if it's a really good fit for you. If you're doing, if you sell a really niche product in a really niche space. Um, so for instance, like when we're targeting marketers in the industrial space in Facebook, like our audience size is like 16,000 people. And we're fine with that because that's, it's, it's, we're really going after like a very specific ad set. And so that's one thing that uh, I would always keep in mind when you're doing audience building in, in Facebook, especially and in LinkedIn. So it's a really, the audience size is the easiest way to, to blow money because you're delivering your ad to too many people and you're just going through your budget real fast. Uh, the other one's empathy, um, understanding your audience, understanding the sort of things that they react to, um, especially things that are contextual. So a great example of this, uh, I know, uh, MJ, who's uh, a host of my podcast, and she runs ads on, on Facebook to machinists. And one of the things that she recognized when she was doing customer interviews was no machinist wears a hard hat in a machine shop. But as she went through all the stock photography for machinists going through Shutterstock or, or whatever's out there, all of them were wearing hard hats. So that was having no context for your audience and your creative. So they were doing that at first, recognizing that, you know, nobody was identifying with that because no machinist wears a hard hat in a, in, a, in a machine shop. And so they ended up using real photos of their people um, or of their customers in a setting and it ended up doing much better because they understood their audience and, and what resonated with them more. Julian, you want to take these last two? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, one, Mohammed, you asked, uh, wouldn't a smaller audience work if your average sales ticket is large? I mean, generally speaking, there's nothing that speaks against a small audience. You just kind of have to see what works for you. I mean, you don't want to go so small that every ad you run, you know, you spend a lot of time putting the ad together and running, you know, putting creative together, setting everything up, and then only, you know, 50 people see it. Or so it kind of depends, you know, it, it just depends. Um, so yeah, lack of testing. Just make sure you, when you run an ad, and this gets more important the more you spend. If you spend very little, let's say 500 bucks a month, maybe you don't have to worry so much about testing because you're not going to get a ton of results or you don't have to do as much testing. But if you're spending 10 grand a month, then you better be testing different audiences and different creatives. So uh, Matt, you can, you can show a little bit later um, how you can test on the audience on the ad set level, and then you can test different creatives on the ad level in Facebook. Um, kind of a general rule of thumb I have for myself on LinkedIn, because obviously we have limited time, just like you guys do. I try to just hit certain benchmarks on LinkedIn. Um, for my ad. And if, if I'm not hitting them, then I'm going to do some more testing. And if I am hitting them, then I might do a little less testing. So it kind of just depends on how much you're spending and uh, how well your ad is working that you're currently running. Anything right. you want to add there, Matt? Uh, I got a, there's a couple of questions rolling in already. So I kind of want to address them real quick. So Blake asks about, do you always start with job title on Facebook? Yes, I do. Uh, answer is the answer to that question. Um, sometimes the job title is not going to get you the audience size that you're looking for just because Facebook's um, data is limited in that regard. If you want to look for targeting on Facebook outside the native audience building, um, you can use a tool like MetaMatch, like, like Metadata and their MetaMatch tool. I mean, it definitely comes with a price tag to that. So it'll be, you know, you'll have to do the math and make sure that works for you. But um, yes, you can use outside tools to do that. I think. Uh, Clearbit is another one that you can use to build a similar audience. Uh, but yeah, I always start with job title and if job title doesn't work, then I go to degree. And if degree doesn't work, then I go to interest. That, that's kind of my order of targeting uh, on, on Facebook. And then uh, when we get into this, when I do the demo, I'll kind of show you how I try to layer stuff on, over that just to, just to make sure I get a, a requisite audience size or if I want to get it really narrowed and then use the audience expansion tool to, to expand beyond that. Um, Dennis's question is a question a lot of uh, people we, clients we work with actually ask, which is how do people respond to getting B2B pitches on Facebook? Um, we don't really pitch people on Facebook. So um, we'll get into this when we get into creative and we get into copy and stuff, but really the idea for Facebook and for LinkedIn for that matter 
is we use it to guarantee consumption of content for our audience. So I'm not running, um, so we're not running ads on Facebook. Or I don't run ads on Facebook to try to get people to register for a demo or request a quote. Um, I try to run ads on Facebook so people will read my blog posts or register for my webinar. Um, that's all value-based, that's not a sales pitch. Um, or they will visit my deep product page that's positioned in such a way that it's supposed to help solve a problem. But my expectation isn't that they're going to directly respond to it by booking time or by requesting a quote. My expectation is that they're going to visit it, consume it, and then we'll be able to go back to them with other advertisement, other creative down the line and just kind of get them in a content stream and a content nurture, similar to what you would do with email really, except it's you, you have a lot more, I think, um, you just have a lot more room to be creative about it. And then, you know, eventually you're going to be the person they think of when they have that need. So I don't usually go to Facebook or LinkedIn to try to get people to buy from me because people aren't there to buy. I go there so they consume my content because both those channels to me are awareness channels. And so I want people to become aware of, of my company on there. Right. And, um, you know, honestly, the, the answer is in the, in, in the data too. Um, there's, I've heard lots of discussions around this, but when we're running ads, let's say I'm running a video ad and I'm spending $5 to have someone watch a video on LinkedIn and I'm spending $2.50 to have someone watch a video on, on Facebook and it's the right fit audience on Facebook and I'm spending half the money, then you know, there's your answer. People are consuming the content that we're putting out there. And I, I know we can say the same thing for let's say we want to send them to a product page, educate them about your product. You're going to be, it, it kind of depends, but a lot of times you're going to be spending half or even a fraction of what you'd be paying on LinkedIn. And the proof is in the data. You can see that people are spending time there and you can see who is spending time there um, just by how you build your audience and how you track results. So you know, that the argument of are B2B people really on Facebook or is it more of a recreation channel? It's just answered in data and you guys should test it and kind of find out for yourself. Uh, to roll the next slide real quick. Uh, Wendy, I see your question and I'm actually going to address that throughout the presentation because um, I actually have a slide kind of dedicated to that. So just hold tight for me on that one. So the kind of ads you should run, I kind of got into this with Dennis's question, but distribute helpful content, um, videos, articles, webinar registrations, communicate benefit. So tell the audience if you're going to do a product page ad, Who's your product for? What does it do? And how is it different? And then let them decide whether or not you're a good fit for it. And position it almost as if like, almost position it like it's a newspaper article or a press release, as opposed to being like, you know, buy this um, industrial robot material handling tool or buy this, you know, electromechanical um, cable assembly. Like, like, like use your headline, use your copy to your advantage to, to create some curiosity and to drive some action. So they go and consume that content. Like your, your goal is again, awareness and also to draw a little bit of excitement around what it is you guys are, you guys are pushing on there. So communicate benefit in a way that people consume content on the platform. Like I click through newspaper articles all the time on Facebook. I, I run into the Wall Street Journal. I run into the New York Times. I run into Politico. I run into ESPN. Um, or I'll kick the coverage or, or whatever it is I was doing. Look at how those headlines are written and then think about for your own company how you can write headlines that are similar that will compel people to click through and then read that content. So think about how you consume content on Facebook and how people and how you click through on content and then you know put that into a business lens and think about how you when you push ads on Facebook how you can do that in the same, same way. Show proof case studies and testimonials, bulletproof pieces of content. They work across almost any platform, LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, and then things do not, we have this crossed off reason because you don't want to do this. You do not want to gate content. So don't send people from Facebook to a, to a landing page to download your ebook. Webinar registrations are a little different. Um, you can do that and, and, and that is okay in, in our opinion. Don't force conversions, hide your CTA or take forever to follow up. I'll give you a great example of when I totally failed doing Facebook ads. <laughs> so like two and a half years ago, I was running Facebook ads for, for my company, Abercore Binzel, and we were working with the welding distributor. And we came up with this idea to drive um, equipment demos to our product. And so what we were going to do, we were talking to people on the Gulf Coast and 
and we were running direct response Facebook lead gen forms. And what happened is they would download it. I'd send it. I immediately had a workflow action to go to their uh, regional salesperson who would follow up with this person. And then, you know, we were going to get a whole bunch of demo requests and we were going to close a bunch of business. So we ran this, had this really cool creative that we ran with a video and then a call to action. And it worked really well for getting people to convert. We had 85 people in two weeks convert to request a demo for this equipment, the piece of equipment, including people from like um, Hunter English Shipyard and like, like, like legitimately good B2B accounts. Um, but then they would follow up and then nobody, nobody would ever respond or, or remember they even put it in. So when I talk about how you don't want to force conversions or run direct response, it's because most people in this webinar right now have a more complex B2B sale. You're not selling shady rays, sunglasses, or you know, any kind of direct to consumer item like that. So, I mean, think about kind of how your sales process works and then strategize your paid media strategy on Facebook and LinkedIn um, in, in accordance with that. So I, we recognized really quickly it failed. We spent 600 bucks to run that. We were getting all these people at like three to four bucks a conversion. None of them flipped. Um, their people were really frustrated. We were really frustrated and we recognized real quickly that that just wasn't uh, a really good ad play. So uh, I wouldn't recommend it because, you know, just it, it just, it, it didn't work for me. Um, and honestly, like people just don't consume people, people just don't buy like that in B2B on, on Facebook. And that's just kind of been, that's been my experience historically. Cool. I got a few things to add there. Um, I think, first of all, you got to think about what your, what your ideal mix is. Cause let's say you're going to run one ad a month, or I mean, ideally you should be running a little more than that, but let's say you're going to run four, four ads a month, one every week. Now you're going to have to figure out every week, what am I going to do? Am I going to try to distribute helpful content and build trust? Am I going to communicate benefit or, you know, show proof and deliver some kind of case study? You just kind of have to figure out what the right mix of content is. It's something that we've been, we've been working on and it, it kind of depends on what works best for you. You have to figure out how many times are you going to show and you know, communicate the benefit of your products and services? How many times are you going to show a case study? And then how many times are you going to distribute, just distribute helpful content where you're, you're probably not going to drive to a conversion or you're not going to see as many conversions. The conversion is really just consuming the content building trust and people recognizing you as the trusted expert. And the other thing I wanted to say is like so many other things in marketing, this is about focus. You know, let's say if you're running, um, especially if you have smaller budgets, you're not running that many ads. If every ad that you're going to run is going to focus a different industry and a different buyer, that's not going to get you very far. But if you focus on one industry and one buyer and you deliver an ad to them every single week or every single month, then you're going to start making some inroads. But if you switch it up every week or every month and change your target, you're, you're not going to get very far. Yeah, the other thing to that is also changing your audience every time you run a new ad. Like run into the same audience over and over and over again. You will, if you keep changing your audience up, you will see zero attraction. Um, I go next. All right, so uh, I'm going to jump into Facebook here and we're going to kind of go over the tool. A uh, lowest viable monthly budget, Blake, it depends on the platform. Um, on Facebook, you can do as little as $5 a day and that's about what I would do. Uh, my personal opinion is you need to be thinking of in Facebook at least two to $3,000 a month. Um, that's what I would be aiming for. I can safely tell you when I was at Binzel before I left, we were we had a, a digital media ad spend that was across LinkedIn, Facebook, and Google of $9,000 a month. And we basically allocated it accordingly based on what was working for us well at the time, which varied by product group. But my recommendation is you should be starting, start the, start the inroads for that conversation with your CFO. And I would really position it as this. Um, if we spent $200,000 on our big trade show and all 40,000 people who attended it visited our booth, we were spending $5 for every single person to come to my trade show booth. Well, I could target a bigger audience on Facebook, get them all to consume my content and spend about, you know, a dollar, dollar fifty to two dollars a click. So it's almost half the price. So in, in my opinion, like you have to start, start that conversation, but you need to dedicate enough budget to get to, to make ends meet. Like you're just simply not going to, you're not going to make a lot of inroads spending $300 a month on Facebook ads, in my opinion. 
Let me uh, see. All right, let's go live into this tool. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of walk through setup real quick, and I'm really gonna try to run through this fast because this actually takes a little while, and I want to make sure that um, and I want to make sure I give Julian time to run through LinkedIn. So okay, we're live. I hope you guys can see this. Um, if you can't, just hit the chat. You can. Okay. All right. So first setup. Um, the only thing that a lot of people think that they can do this from your Facebook page. There's actually a bunch of there's three different kind of Facebook accounts that you got to think of. There's your Facebook page, there's your ads manager, and there's your business manager. So you need a Facebook ads account, which you can either get straight through Facebook ads, or you can go through Facebook business manager and, and come up with an ad account that way. But this is that tool. This is Facebook ads manager. This is its own tool all to itself. And so this is where if you want to run ads where you're doing you know, high targeting, uh, you're going to want to use a, you're going to want to use this tool in particular. And this is where most people, this is where you're running ads um, for Facebook. So create simply just right there. Um, I would always default to if, if I'm not sure what my goal is, my goal is going to be traffic. Um, traffic is going, Facebook will just deliver this to people who are most likely to, um, most likely to click on your ad, go through to your landing page whatever it is, if you're running a, um, if you're running a video ad and strictly you just want people to consume video on Facebook that you're running, go to video views. Um, and if you're gonna run something more, if you're gonna run something where you want conversions in particular, I mean, you can do conversions, but I would always default to traffic. Traffic is usually my go-to. Um, typically it delivers it to the most people. It keeps my cost lowest um, and it's historically performed best for me. So that's usually where I, I default to. So. You just click your consideration on um, brand, brand awareness and reach. Those are going to be ones where it'll be really inexpensive, um, but it's going to do it's it's to me, it's it's um, it's been something where it's delivered to a lot of people having gotten a lot of great traffic from it. People will kind of click into your page and bounce right out. Um, so again, like traffic has always been my default. It's always historically performed best for me. And I would recommend whenever you're in doubt, go to traffic. Um, so just the first part of this, I'll just go through just setting up real quick. Once you kind of pick your campaign objective, you're going to like name your campaign, um, your auction style, your campaign objectives, traffic, you can edit it in here. A-B testing, they've done away with that. You can do that in a tool called Experiments. Um, I would do most of my testing within the ad itself. And I would, and I'll go in through a little bit outside the tool of kind of how I structure that a little. Um, and then at that point, just name your campaign and then click next and then you're going to go into ad set. So let me X out of this. Once you kind of click next, you're going to go into your ads manager and you'll you'll get into ad sets and ad sets is where you build your audience. Um, and this is where you can build multiple audiences under the same campaign. So if you look at kind of the structure of Facebook ads, your campaign is sort of like your product or your product group. Um, or if you have multiple companies, maybe you would be running one for your company your ad sets or your audiences. So if you're gonna target like CFOs in one audience and engineers in another, you'd build the different audiences in the ad set. And then the ads are all a different creative that you would be delivering for that audience. So that is, that's, that's, how, that's how to structure your Facebook ads um, in sort of a, in sort of a, in, in terms of levels. And so the ad set here is where we'll do the audience targeting. And so I wanna dive into this because you know, the big debate that always happens is like, well, you can't target industrial people on Facebook. And I know that is not true because I've done it. And I, and I know those people are on there. I've seen them on Facebook groups and I know you can target them in within Facebook. So um, I built a couple audiences here. Let's do manufacturing engineers. So I'll go to edit. And Julian, I cannot see questions. So just monitor them and we'll, we'll jump in while- I'll, I'll throw them your way. Okay. So far um, dead silence. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me just get in here real quick. Um, let's edit this. Let me in. Yeah. Okay. So here's where you do your budget, start date. You can put an end date as well. Um, daily budget. You can do lifetime budget as well. Um, this is your audience definition. This is kind of going to be your barometer of what your audience is going to look like. Daily reach is strictly based on the amount of money you're going to spend. So if you were to up your budget here, this, these numbers would change. See, so it's basically just Facebook figuring out based on their historical data, how much you're going to spend. Um, audience definition, this is where you do here. So I would always do, usually I start with cold targeting audience. You can certainly retarget off of your website. We don't have that built into this webinar, um, but there's a way to do that. 
A couple of things that I always look for when I'm building audiences in Facebook is age. Um, people often don't consider age or they keep it too broad. So I usually think like 25 to 60 or 62. If you go 65 plus, you're going to get a whole lot of people who are just not like on Facebook to become aware of stuff. Um, and then the detail targeting here. So this is where to me, you can, you can really do a lot of interesting stuff. So um, I want to target manufacturing engineers in this one. So I basically started by finding, you know, a manufacturing engineer. So let me just back out of this a little bit. I'll see if I can rebuild this. Um, so let me just X some of these out. And so you can see I already have a few loaded in here. This suggestions tab here is going to really be your best friend when you're building an audience. So as soon as you get your first title and it looks good for you, hit that suggestions T and then you're gonna see all these things pop up. And what's weird is you can do this in Facebook. And if you just try to type in process control engineer, it's not gonna really pop up for you. But if you have sort of all these groups of people, um, groups of job titles here, it'll all of a sudden, all that stuff will start to populate and it becomes a lot easier to build your audience. So this is the most efficient way for me to build your audience up. Um, so I can find that manufacturing one again. Uh, there it is. And so the other thing to consider is this column right here on the far right. So job titles versus interest is a huge distinction for you to make. Um, you want job titles first before anything. Job titles are gonna perform better for you because they're gonna be more targeted. And so, Try to build based off one group. Don't try to combine job title and interest if you if you can avoid that. Um, it'll just help you build just a, a cleaner audience for you to, to try. Um, so I got a list of 34,000 people here. I couldn't quite recreate that list. Let's say I wanna like focus in even more. So 34,000 is you know, not that big of a list, but let's say I turn on this detailed audience expansion. All of a sudden it's going to go from 34,000 to it's gonna predict for me 160 million. So I don't really want an audience that big for a lot of reasons. So what I would do here is I would just start to narrow the audience down. Let's turn this off real quick. Um, narrowing audiences helps you kind of layer additional um, criteria over it. So if I want to narrow the audience by job title plus interest. So let's make sure that a manufacturing engineer has an interest in metalworking or welding. Let's do metalworking. And then again, go to suggestions and then it's going to put metal fabrication. It's going to put machining. It's going to put manufacturing. It's going to put welding. Um, and these are all going to basically whittle your list down and get it a little tighter. It's, it's not quite as tight here as I like it. It's, it's a little too small for my liking here. Um, normally I'd spend a little bit more time messing around in the tool to try to get this to work as well as well I want. But then here's a 15,000 person list, which is, is a little small, but it's okay. And then I turn detail, I can turn at this point, detail expansion on and I'm back at 34,000. But essentially when I run this ad, um, what'll happen is Facebook will do a lot of machine learning based on people who interact with it and then expand the audience gradually to deliver to more people who kind of fit in around the subset. So that's why I, I, I would use the targeting expansion tool with caution. Um, sometimes if you have a big enough audience, so let me go to machinist for instance, for instance. And I'll show this audience real quick because this is a really interesting audience to me. And then I'm going to try to not spend too much time in here, Julian, so you can have time for your stuff. So let's go to Machinist. So Machinist, um, it's like 96,000, I believe is what this thing got built up to. Yeah, 96,000. So I would not even do audience expansion with this one. I would just run this to the 96,000 people I built. And so let me go to all the people here. So CNC machine operator, CNC machining. Again, you can see job titles here. Machinist programmer, programmer, machine operator, metal CNC operator. So at this point, I would just run the ad to just these job titles and just this 96,000 people, see what kind of results I was getting. And if my cost per click was good, if um, the frequency was low enough, um, or, or actually once the frequency got you know, to a certain point, like I would try to not have a frequency over five, then I would clone this uh, which you just simply do here. You kind of just click this, hit duplicate, and then you would put it in the, like within the existing campaign again, you would turn this audience expansion on and then let it re-deliver to that audience. And then that's where you can, you can, Facebook's proprietary algorithmic data is super powerful. Like none of us know it, but I mean, it, it can reach a lot of people who do, who are exactly fit your job title match and find them. So 
Matt, can you can you just go up one more time and just talk through how are your how exactly you're targeting? So you're yeah. targeting by job titles, right? You've got job titles in there, you've got age, and then you yeah, what? so job titles, age, and then another one that I use is language. Um, so I, I have all languages here, which I shouldn't. I should apologize for that. So I usually target like English US, and that'll keep me, that'll make sure I just have English speaking people who are getting the ad and that will whittle it down even more. Um, if you're not going to deliver an ad in Spanish or anything like that, which can happen, um, Spanish speaking machinists, um, especially in areas of the country. Um, so that, that'll also help make sure that your ad gets delivered to the right people. So I usually am looking at um, age. So again, 25 to 60, 30 to 60, somewhere around there. Um, demographics, um, usually starting with job title. And then from there, I go to degrees if I can use that, or if I can't do that, a, a mixture of like interest that get my that get my audience to a good spot. And then language is the other one that I use. So uh, I'll show you guys one that I've built with interest, which is the industrial robotics section audience. Um, again, it doesn't have to be anything super complicated. You just have to find the things, the, the criteria that Facebook gives you and then utilize it. So this one's 110,000, which is you know pretty much where I'd about the limit of where I'd want it to be, all things considered. Again, 25 to 60. It was industrial robot was the only thing that I did as a criteria. Let's say I wanted um, industrial robots and their other interest was welding because I wanted to go after like um, like welding automation specialists was basically the criteria. So I can narrow the audience, go to welding. There's welding as an interest. And now I'm down to 42,000, which is a really good audience size because that's probably about what the you know welding automation sector looks like in terms of audience size. So you know again, use this narrow feature um, uh, in Facebook Audience Builder to help you significantly get your audience. If, if you have a really big load of audience, use this to narrow it down to what you want to be. Use a suggestions key. You see, once you already have one chosen, it really starts to get smart for you and, and help and help whittle it down. So. That would be my suggestion for audience building to get you guys started. Again, I try to keep it 25,000 to 100,000 if I can. You can go smaller and that's not a problem. If you have a really focused product, you can go larger if you have something that has a broad total addressable market. But if all things being equal and not knowing much about your guys' businesses, that's the land, that's the range that I would start with. All right, let me jump out of here. You can put the slide back up. Hey Matt, one question. So in terms of uh, knowing, let's say you ran an ad and uh, you spend five grand on it and you want to know, or let's say you spend just $500 on it just to start. How do you know you're reaching the right people? How do you do that? Uh, so I would be judging things like the result. So what's my cost per result? Um, let's say I'm taking them to a blog, right? So I would go to my Google analytics. I would go check on that blog. I would see traffic coming from that UTM parameter. And then I would see how long are they spending on that page? Are they spending two, at two minutes and 30 seconds on that page reading that blog? Uh, or if I have a scroll depth trigger on Google Tag Manager, are they scrolling at 50 or 75%? I just want to see, like, are they consuming that? And then is that cost something I'm willing to pay? So those are the criteria that I'm thinking of and considering when I'm judging the success of, of an ad. Or not. Does, that, does that make sense? And then I guess when you're running something like a product service ad that's more designed to generate a quote, after they, after you educate them on the product, I guess you, you, we can always look at what kind of forms are being submitted. Who are the actual people coming through? You ever do that? I mean, you can certainly ask like, you know, how did you, how did you find us? I mean, those are things you'll have to do through your sales process. I mean, we're, we're, it's, it's kind of getting into at, the weeds of attribution. Um, I would just trust that I'm delivering the ad to the right people. I'm getting the result and I'm simply connecting the dots between you know, my activity on, on Facebook and then, you know, the end result, which I'm searching for, which is essentially, you know, marketing generated pipeline. Sounds good. All right. Let me pop out. Let me, let me get out of here. Stop share. Hey, one last question for you, Matt. How, yeah, often, yeah. Do you, how often do you use the exclude option for narrowing targets? Um, I don't, I don't typically have to use it often just because when I'm doing the industrial space, it's so specialized that I don't have to worry about it. Now, if I, I can't speak to larger um, sort of ad sets where if I was selling sunglasses or something like that, or maybe I'd want to use the exclusion tool, but the exclusion tool works very much just like the, the narrow group tool. So you can simply exclude people who match certain demographic behaviors and um, cladding, for instance, or something like that. 
Time to join up there is. And I did nothing. Should we do some questions here or jump into LinkedIn? Um, yeah, are there, if there are questions on Facebook, we can run through them for sure. But I do want to give you time <laughs> through LinkedIn with 35 minutes in already. All right, maybe let's maybe let's jump into LinkedIn and then uh, tackle some questions after that. I'll, yeah, I'll try to keep it brief, guys. Yeah, I, I don't I don't want to cheat people. I don't want to cheat people out of LinkedIn either because we wanted to do both. So go ahead and throw your um, go ahead and throw the um, slide deck back on, and then you can just run through. You can you can skip my slides. We'll get into them. Should we just jump right in here? Yeah, go for it. All right, cool. All right, so for LinkedIn, I, I'm going to try to keep it very basic. Luckily, LinkedIn, first of all, is a lot more digestible than uh, than Facebook ads manager. There's just not as much going on, not as many layers between the ads manager and the business manager and all the different different levels that you have within the ads manager. So that's nice, first of all. I'm gonna show you guys um, three different things. There's a lot more you can do, but those three things are the, the things that have worked the best for us in the past. So I'm gonna show you how to target by company list and job titles. I'm going to show you how to do industry targeting, which is pretty straightforward. And then um, also how you can use group targeting. And I'm just going to go through this, through creating a campaign, kind of like Matt did, and show you what I'm going to look for when I'm setting up, up a campaign. And by the way, this is what what our uh, campaign manager looks like for Gorilla. You can kind of see what we're spending on our ads. And you know, these are, it's, it's kind of meta. This is what these are the kind of ads that we're running to promote this webinar. So if you saw an ad pop up, it's probably, it was probably one of these. Um, but let's just jump into it and start creating a campaign. And I'll just walk you through the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. So actually, before I get into this, I'm going to show you something else. So I, I've kind of found that the one of the most bulletproof ways of targeting on LinkedIn is targeting a company list which is also what we're doing for Gorilla a lot of times. So what you can do is you can upload a list of companies to LinkedIn and say, I wanna to advertise to these 5,000, 500, whatever you want it to be companies. And LinkedIn will go and match those for you. So what this looks like is like this. If it ever loads. So basically what we did here is we we handpicked a list of 5,000 companies, which you can see here. And we can see um, how they're engaging with our ads too. So we've built a list of 5,000 or so companies. Um, basically what we do is we use the audience template that LinkedIn is giving us. I'm gonna pull that up. So what you can do here is create an audience and upload a list. You can name it, but first what you're gonna to wanna to do is download this company list template. There's gonna be a lot of columns in here, but the only two you really need are the company name and the domain. And then LinkedIn is gonna go and match that company and that has that domain with, um, with your list and is gonna give you those, um, those companies in your, in your campaign manager. So you can just upload those here. Um, different ways to get that company list is you can get that from Zoom Info. You can use a tool like Uplead. Um, Matt, something that you did the other day, which is cool, was going to ThomasNet, looking at a ThomasNet category and just having someone um, go through that list and putting it in a spreadsheet. Um, so there's a lot of different ways for getting a list for, for, of companies here. You can also go to like, like ENR top 100 company lists. I did that too. I mean throwing Google searches like we did one for a client we were searching for the top 100 curtain wall manufacturers in the US and lo and behold ENR had a list of that for us so I mean there you I mean th th those are usually the ways that I'm doing it we did one for window manufacturers was another one um, for the specialized machine uh, client of ourselves and um, we were able to use Tom a mixture of Thomas net LinkedIn and um, and just basic like Google review articles essentially to try to find some of those. So, I mean, yeah. we find, I mean, you gotta, there's a little bit of grunt work involved with finding companies to target, but I mean, just use Google, use Thomas net, use, uh, use those, um, industry magazines when they do their best of reviews. Those are definitely great resources. Yeah. Lots of people on Upwork too. If there's a lot of grunt work involved and it's very, very straightforward, there's lots of people on Upwork who can help you with that stuff. Um, if you need any, any names, we can give you some, um, if that's ever helpful. So um, we're going to set up a campaign here in, in Campaign Manager. And the first thing you're going to look at, Matt already talked about this, 
are the different objectives. So you got everything from brand awareness to website visits to lead generation. The only two that are really going to matter for you are probably website visits and video views. Um, you can technically do brand awareness. It's kind of the same as website visits, to be honest. Um, it's just targeting. It's not targeting differently. It's just billing you differently and delivering in a slightly different way. Um, I wouldn't worry about conversions, lead generation, website conversion, job, job applicants. I would most of the time, nine out of 10 times, I would stick with website visits. And then a few things I'm going to do up front is, first of all, when you're picking a location, I like to pick a permanent location. Um, seems trivial, but you know, if you don't do this, you're going to get people traveling through the U.S. And you know, a lot of times you probably don't want to target those people. I usually turn off in, uh, audience expansion. It's not very smart on LinkedIn. The algorithm here doesn't work that well. You can test it for yourself and see what happens. But basically, this is just telling LinkedIn, you know, I gave you these companies and these job titles and I go for find more people that look kind of like this. And okay. uh, in, important distinction to make there. Audience expansion on Facebook is good when used um, when used responsibly. And on LinkedIn, we would never recommend using it. <laughs> Yeah. So the first thing, so let's talk about company targeting by, by using the list. So if you're, you know, we can go to audiences and then list upload. And what I'm going to do for a gorilla a lot of times is just choose this uh, G76 outreach list, which has our, our target list of, you know, 5,000 or so companies on it that are hand selected. And I know that are a good fit and then pretty straightforward. I'm just going to target specific job titles at these, at these companies. So, you know, if I'm going to run an ad for this webinar, I'm going to use job titles like marketing director, director of sales and marketing, and so on. What you're not going to see right now is the forecasted result um, because the audience is archived, but I'm going to pull this up in a second um, with just industry targeting. So let's take this out actually. and let's target an industry instead. So something else that works really well, if uh, the LinkedIn industry you know, is a good fit for who you're trying to go after, for us historically have, we, we've used machinery. So we'll use this and then we're gonna get a target audience size. Now you see, this is, this is really small. And uh, for us, that's okay. We're probably gonna add a lot more job titles if we were to actually run this ad, but um, right now you're seeing 1400. And sometimes what I see happening is I see, uh, when I look at my demographics report, which I, I'll show you in a second, I see some large companies sneaking in or some companies that I'm not really trying to go after or job titles that I'm not trying to go after. So um, I might retroactively go in here and exclude those companies. So one company that slipped in the other day, which is a huge company, is going to eat up a lot of our budget when that happens, um, is Aon, which is a huge insurance company. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and exclude that. And you know, if, that, if that's a big chunk of your audience size, you'll see that go down here. But that's something to keep in mind. You can exclude other things here. It just kind of depends on, on what you're going for. Something else that I'll usually do is for Gorilla, you know, we're not going to work with companies that have over 5,000 employees. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and exclude those. And I just lost a hundred people that were not going to be a, a great fit for us. Um, so that's something to, something to keep in mind. Something else that I usually do is I use this segment breakdown. LinkedIn just introduced that pretty recently and I'll, I'll just kind of look through, look through this and gut check if the audience I built looks right. So I've got mainly marketing people in here, 40% um, sales and a little bit of biz dev. That sounds, that sounds right to me. And then I can also check the different company sizes that I'm targeting and the industries that I'm targeting, which should, should be machinery. Um, somehow these two sneak into, just gives you, gives you another layer of safety. just making sure that you're actually going after the right people. Um, all right. So in terms of ad formats, got lots of different ones. We usually stick with a single image ad. Um, we've the text ad, the spotlight ad, I wouldn't mess with those. They're not going to work well for you. Um, the message ad and the conversation ad, we've played around with those a little bit, but honestly not enough to give you guys a good recommendation. So um, the, your safe bet is going to be the single image ad. 
Uh, sometimes it can be the carousel image ad. Um, it's just going to require a little more work on on doing the creative. And I haven't seen you know better results from the carousel ad. So it's like, why am I going to spend more time making it if I can just use a single image? So I just stick with that usually. I turn off the LinkedIn audience network, which LinkedIn is going to go to third-party websites and put your ad there. Um, it hasn't worked well for us, so we don't do it. And this is an important one, bidding. Um, usually I'll just set a lifetime budget because it's it's another safety net. I can set a limit here and I'm, I'm going to know that LinkedIn is not going to go over. I can set a start and end date. And what you definitely don't want to do is turn on maximum delivery because LinkedIn is going to take your money happily and throw it out the window. What you should do instead is use manual bidding um, almost always. You can also use target cost. Um, they're very similar. Manual bidding kind of gives you the most control. And in most cases, what I will do is I will put this down to the low, the absolute lowest, which you can just find that out by putting $1 in here. And then it's going to tell you what the minimum is. So for example, we could start at $3.60 here. Um, with an audience this small, it's not much is going to happen. So I wouldn't do this in this case. But in most scenarios for you guys, if you have a larger audience, start with the lowest bid. Let it run for a day and see what happens. Um, if nothing happens, which you might get a little traction, um, then you're going to bump up your bid two or three dollars, and you can do that for a few days until you reach a where you reach a, a bid where you're kind of naturally spending your your daily daily amount, if that makes sense. So if you're planning to to spend, let's say a hundred bucks a day, um, just try to up that bid until you hit that hundred bucks a day um, pretty naturally. Um, if you're going to go with LinkedIn's recommendation, you're going to start with $18. And if, you get, if you've got a, a 50 bucks per day budget, then you can get what? <laughs> Not even five clicks. You can get like three or four clicks. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. So this is where I talk about like, you know, how much does your product cost? Because if you sell a $2,500 industrial product and there's not a lot of residual revenue coming from that after you sell it, LinkedIn probably isn't going to be good to fit for you at $18 a click at the top. Um, yeah. Just yeah. Something, something to keep in mind, like, you know, consider how much the lifetime value of your customer is and then do the math from there. Yep. So just, just as a reference point for Gorilla right now, the ads that we're running, we're paying about $10 per click, a little less than that. Um, so it kind of, it just kind of depends. We have a small audience. If we had a larger audience, you know, five bucks might fly. Um, it's just something for you to experiment with. Make sure to set up conversion tracking. Um, in most cases, that's going to be your request a quote form or something in that, you know, that nature. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't talk about that in Facebook, but that's another thing to set up in Facebook. They call it a pixel. Um, you have mostly like you, you can set a whole bunch of pixels on Facebook. It's a whole topic all unto itself. Um, just set up your main company pixel. And then if you need to kind of drill down from there for certain conversions, um, you know, definitely, definitely do so. But I would start with one company pixel to start with and not, and not worry about getting too in the weeds, getting started. All right. I'm actually not going to go into the creative. I think that's pretty straightforward, but um, one thing that I wanted to show you guys is the demographics functionality, which I didn't realize existed until very recently. And I feel kind of ashamed for it, but um, this is really important um, for optimizing your campaign and making sure you're targeting the right people. So um, you can go into the demographics report. It's not showing a ton because we didn't spend a ton of money on this ad, but what you can see here is who actually saw your ad and you can check out the, the company. So these are all the people that we're seeing our ad um, clicks and conversions are below the reporting minimum. So it's not showing up. Um, but this is a good way for you to make sure that what I just said with Aon or other huge companies that shouldn't be in here, uh, make sure to check out that report and make sure this looks right. Check out the job titles, of the companies and the industries and make sure that you're targeting the, targeting the right people. All right, Julian, we got a few questions here and I think we, I think we should tackle them because they're good questions. All right. Let's uh, go. Can I, can I get on one more thing? Yeah, yeah get one more thing. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say one last thing. So, um, one thing that Matt touched on a little bit earlier was frequency. Um, frequency is kind of a, a metric that is not talked about very often, but is very important to understand. So this is, this is where you find frequency in LinkedIn. You just set the column right here to delivery. 
and you're going to get three different metrics impressions reach and frequency impressions means every time someone scrolled past your ad um, the reach just means these are the actual unique people that you reached and if you if you say you know you've reached 1200 people here um, you've got 3,000 impressions. Well, 3,000 divided by 1,200 something is you 2.2. So on average, each of these people has seen your ad 2.4 something times. Um, Matt and I were talking about this earlier. We kind of um, landed on different numbers, but the point is, you know, you want to keep this frequency low. Uh, Matt was saying, you know, he, he tries to keep it under five. I try to keep it under three. Just kind of depends. But the point is, if you keep, you know, if you show your ad to the same person over and over and over again, there's a point where you're going to not get value out of one additional impression, but you're going to keep paying for it. So rather than keep then showing the ad, the same ad over and over and over again, you want to keep that frequency low and switch out the ad, show them a different creative or send them to something else because they, you're going to keep paying for it and not get any additional value. So just on keep it on frequency. Also, I would, I would add your audience size will matter too. So if you have a small audience and your frequency is, you know, four or five, not a huge deal because your audience is small. It's going to keep giving it to the same people. But if you have an audience of 90,000 people and their frequency is four or five, uh, you probably have a creative issue or there's something going on with your ad that you should be investigating or you should be looking at rotating another ad in at that point. All right. So let's tackle some of these cues because we got a few here. And we have, we still have more PowerPoint presentation, but I feel like we're better off just going into questions because people are asking them. Um, Wendy, you asked earlier, way earlier about benchmarking. And so I want to answer that question for you. Um, we talked about frequency. That is definitely a benchmark you should be, you should have in mind. Um, cost per result. So your result depends on your creative. So if you are running a video, it's going to be cost per video view. If you're running um, a blog article on Facebook, it's going to be cost per click to go to your website. Um, so I would run whatever that creative is, whether that's a video or an article or a case study. And then I would run it for like two weeks to 30 days and then see what it com see what comes out, see what it comes out to. Let that be your benchmark for your audience and then try to optimize through that. So optimize through more narrow targeting, optimize through different creative um, uh, or different content. Um, and so that, that, that's what I would do for benchmarking. I would be aiming personally Depending, and it's going to depend on the audience because some audiences are frankly just more expensive to target than others. When I was in the welding industry, my goal was 250 a click to, to get people to read my article. And my goal was five seconds per view for a video. Now, in other industries, that's ridiculously expensive. But my historical numbers running ads on Facebook, that was, that was kind of the numbers I was looking for. And in terms of cost per click, I was looking at about nine bucks per click on LinkedIn. Um, so it's going to depend on your audience, really. And that's really, and that's going to have a huge impact on what the proper benchmarks are for you. So my suggestion would be start small, you know, run it for a set amount of time, see what kind of numbers you get, and then try to beat them over and over and over again. Um, so that's probably, that's the best way in, in my mind to set up benchmarking for yourself. Um, now we got a few questions here on, let's see, someone asked about seriousness of people on LinkedIn versus Facebook. So Chris asked this question. This is a great question because this is another thing that comes in all the time where, you know, LinkedIn is a, is, is a business, um, is a business place and Facebook is not for people who are serious. And that's definitely a, a argument that we get a lot. Um, I would tell you that it really hasn't mattered for me much. I've actually, I mean, I've historically gotten better results on Facebook than LinkedIn. So I definitely, if, I get the choice, I'm gonna favor Facebook um, for advertising. And people there are actually way more engaged with your, with your ads. So they comment on them more, you get a lot more direct messages on Facebook Messenger from your ads. I'm like, nobody on LinkedIn it will direct message your company um, based on an ad that you have on LinkedIn. Like Facebook happens a lot. If your creative's good and if you're running the same stuff through the audience, like we have one client who does that with just video funnels. And they're, and, and they're just, I mean, they get three or four messages a week with people asking them for quote requests or demos or, hey, do you guys do this sample? Um, like a lot, of, a lot of good feedback like that, um, which is good, goes back to attribution. Like it's hard to give attribution to that kind of stuff. You just got to kind of see the quality of feedback that you get on, on some of the advertisers, both in terms of the numbers and just the overall, overall response. But my, my experience is that people on Facebook are just as serious as LinkedIn when it comes to um, ads. Julian, do you have do you have an opinion on that? What was the question again? 
do you find users on LinkedIn are more serious than Facebook in the manufacturing space? I mean, again, it's just the, the answer is in data. Just test both and see what happens and measure by cost, cost, uh, cost per result, whatever that result is, whether it's a webinar registration or an, an RFQ, just test it and you'll find out. Um, I don't think there's, I don't think there's a, really an argument behind the seriousness. I think it's just, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't see it. I, I think it's just, where can you reach your audience better? I think both are social networks. I think there's different content happening on LinkedIn than, than there is on Facebook. So I'm, I think there might be a difference in what kind of creative works on each platform, but yeah, I think you can, you can generate great results on both platforms. It just kind of depends what, which one is a fit for you. If Facebook is a great fit for you, I think you should go for that first because it's cheaper, but again, measure, measure at the bottom line as much as, as much as you can, um, rather than just looking at the cost per click. Um, opinion on video ads from Laura. Um, what was the question? What are your opinions on video ads? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we've actually um, been running a lot of them recently. Um, I think video ads are a really great way to distribute content and uh, you can distribute your expertise, if you, if you will. Um, the great thing about video ad is just the format. People don't have to leave LinkedIn and they don't have to leave Facebook. They can just watch the video right there. They don't need to go to your website and read a piece which just leads to a lot more content being consumed, if that makes sense. Like if you were just scrolling through your feed, the likelihood of you watching a video that's promoted to you is just a lot higher than you clicking on that article and going through that web to that website and reading the whole article. So it's just a lot easier to distribute knowledge, um, if that makes sense. It's just, the, it's just a different f format that's used differently, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'll, I'll fold this into um, Jennifer's question as well, because she had a question about our videos more extensive than image-based ads. And the answer to that is um, they're actually cheaper per view. You're measuring different things though, right? Because like when you do video, you're measuring the cost of view. So like you want to know how many, like how much does it cost for someone to watch 50, 75, 100% of my video? Um, what is the average watch time? So if I have a 50 second video and the average person is watching Eight, eight seconds of it, not good. If I have a 50 second video and the average person's watching 44 seconds of it, amazing, right? So I'm measuring different stuff when I'm doing video ads versus image-based ads. When I'm doing image-based ads, I'm looking at click-through rate, cost per click, time on page, scroll depth, if, if we have that set up, um, and then deciding whether I think that's worth paying for or not. Yeah. Um, so, question. sorry, go ahead, Matt. So, Videos are actually less expensive, um, but the purpose of them is, is different, right? Like a video-based ad, you're doing that with the intention of not getting someone off of the platform. Like most people are going to watch a video ad and never click through to your website. That's just kind of how that's going to work. Very, I mean, much, much fewer people will do that. And that's not what you should be measuring as opposed to an image-based ad where you should be measuring that because that's actually the thing you should be judging success on. So I think the purposes of them are different. And I also think you should always be mixing the two creatives in. Like I see companies who do just video ads and I think you should be mixing in video ads and image ads and you know other, uh, other types of ads as well. Uh, the other thing about video ads that I would also add in and strongly recommend for anyone who's thinking about doing them, please make sure you caption your video. Most people are going to be watching, scrolling and watching videos with their phone on silent. They're not going to hear your person talking if they have a speaking part. So if you have any kind, of, if you have anyone talking or narrating, caption it. Go caption it. Uh, like if you were on one of our earlier webinars where we talked about doing video or audiograms, go to Splashio, go to go to Veed. Um, you know, get caption your video um, if you're going to do video ads because most people are going to be reading what you what your what your talent is saying um, as opposed to actually listening to them. Um, a couple questions from Phil here. Any plans to do a webinar on setting up pixels, conversion tracking, et cetera? Phil, I think you just gave us a next webinar topic idea. So appreciate that. We, we, will, we will put that in the bank to cover that. Do we see any complementary you know, dynamics between organic social and paid social or do you treat them completely separate? Uh, I personally choose them completely separate. 
uh, to, to answer your question, like I, I poured a lot of energy into like my company LinkedIn page when I was at Finzel and there was very little overlap between, um, there was very little overlap between the content and the engagement I was getting on, on, on LinkedIn versus what I was getting on, um, what, what I was getting on the, on the ad platform. So in, in my opinion, there's not a lot of a, a complimentary there. Um, if anything, like you think about it, a lot of your employees and coworkers are on, um, a lot of your employees and your coworkers are actually on your, your LinkedIn or your Facebook. Facebook's organic reach is pretty, it's basically dead. Um, one thing I, one thing, one thing that are, one thing, one thing that is slick to do is putting an organic Facebook post up and then, um, and then boosting it, not boosting it, but using it as an ad creative. And then also when people go to your Facebook page, you see you have maybe like 200 likes or something like that. But no, there's, there's, no, there's very little in my experience overlap between the two and I, I would treat them separately. Do you, do you disagree, agree, Julian, anything to add to that? I think there's some stuff that you can try. Um, well, we haven't done it just because we haven't had the time, but I just love to get, yeah, I don't, I don't want to keep paying for ads. And, you know, in an ideal world, we have access to our audience for free. Like we have followers on LinkedIn or we have an email list um, and we don't want to keep paying for ads because for obvious reasons, we don't want to keep paying for ads. So one thing that we've been thinking about is, um, you know, when we go into that demographics um, tab and LinkedIn ads, picking out some companies that have seen the last 10 of our, of our ads, something like that, and connecting with those people on LinkedIn or seeing who's liking our stuff on LinkedIn, who's liking our ads on LinkedIn and connecting with them, um, specifically Joe. So he's, he's the, uh, the co-founder of Gorilla. And we were promoting a lot of videos that were featuring him. So it made a lot of sense for him to connect with people who are liking the ad and who are watching a lot of the ads. Um, so there's a little bit of, you know, interplay between organic and paid. And, you know, if you did this for a year and you were really investing time in this, um, you would probably be able to get off of paid a little bit and just build your audience on, on LinkedIn organic instead. For sure. Do you want to jump back in this, into the presentation real quick and we'll, we'll run through a couple of the last things and then uh, we can close it up. And if people, if you guys have more questions, like please drop them in the chat. We'll, if you guys want to go through maybe something specifically you have about the platform for your company, you know, we can see if we can, we can build an audience or anything like that. So we kind of went through things to measure. Um, can you go back to the Facebook, uh, can you go to the next one? Uh, yeah. So I mean, when you're in Facebook and you're kind of seeing what you want to measure, like I'm looking at, you can see cost per result and impressions, cost per reach 1000, um, just looking at what's more cost effective and then what's getting more results. So if you look at the bottom example, um, where I was two different creatives that I was basically testing and one was like, it was basically on this, this, this webinar. I was like, do you want to start Facebook ads? Or are you not sure? Or I also said like, I, I made the, the, um, decision to do it based on the creative of like trade shows are dead and you need to reallocate your spend. So did both of those, ran them for the same amount of time with the same cost um, controls on it. And you can see that people wanting to get started on Facebook ads, um, that was like half the price per result with the exact same, basically the exact same reach and impression and a higher click through rate. So when I talk about testing creative, test big ideas on your copy. Like what are the, what are the things you wanna see like what people react to? And then, you know, you can also, you know, multiply that by, um, by different creative, like different images or stuff like that. So I have one I'm doing right now where we're targeting space, um, space shuttle manufacturers, like, like SpaceX and stuff like that. And we have like one where it's like a picture of the project and it's just like a generic shot of a rocket ship flying into space. So it's like, um, and then we're doing like, like time versus money versus risk management. And so those are all three like copy ideas times creative. And so you're basically making six variations of your ad as a result, because you're going to put each of those copy variations with the creative variation. And then you'll have six different ad creatives at that point, And you'll see which one performs the best. So that's, that's what I mean when I say like, you know, try to test different sort of creatives to see what people respond to, because you'll be surprised. Like what happens? Like I, I kind of expected the Facebook ads ones would do better. I didn't expect it to be literally 150% uh, less expensive per click. Like that, that was surprising. Next, um, we can run through. Um, so when you're in Facebook, I, I should have mentioned like when you're, 
in the ad platform and you want to see same thing as Julian showed with LinkedIn, you can hit this little um, menu right here where it says um, where the three bars are and you can change the setup. They have a default performance. You can customize it on the bottom as you see. Uh, video engagements um, is the other one you'd want to see if you're running a video ad and then performance default or you can set your own customized column up and you can do all sorts of different measurements because um, you're going to want to add frequency. It's not always in every sort of one. So just, just something to something to keep in mind to set up. You know, next real quick. I want to try to run through these because we're already like an hour, five minutes in. Uh, this is about time on page. This is kind of self-explanatory. I think I, I think I explained this, but you would go to Google Analytics and kind of see your time on page with the UTM parameter on it to kind of see. I mean, you can use HubSpot as well, very similarly to see how, how much people are spending time um, on that certain page that you're using for creative. And then live demo, we can run through all that. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're almost through this, man. Um, yeah, you want to you want to talk about this? <laughs> yeah, one question that you may or may not have is how much to spend. Um, I think somebody asked about what what's the minimum bat budget. You can kind of you could address this in a number of ways. You could say, um, well, I know my I know my customer customer acquisition cost from last year um, and what it's in, from the ads that I've been running um, and from the marketing channels different marketing channels. I know my cost per acquisition and I want to acquire this many customers next year. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to need this much ad budget. So you can look at it this way. A lot of people don't know that, um, don't know these, these numbers. So you could also do a top down and this is kind of what I'm showing here. Um, but basically if you're asking yourself how much to spend, that's, that's a big, it depends question or it depends answer. Um, so for example, on the left here, if you're targeting an audience of, of 10,000 people on LinkedIn, and you want to show them an ad four times a month and you want to keep the frequency under three, that's going to cost you like two grand per month. If you are going to do the same thing on Facebook, it might just cost you 600 bucks a month. Um, so, you know, obviously Facebook looks a lot cheaper here again, optimized for bottom line results and compare that. But uh, on the right is a little bit of, of math that might help you um, get a rough idea of how much you might want to spend. So you can plug in your audience size and, um, frequency and cost per thousand reached and uh, all these metrics and figure out approximately how much you have to budget for, for a campaign monthly or um, over however, however many months you're going to run this campaign. All right. Final thoughts for us. Strategy, strategy, strategy. Um, basically what, what we want to drive home to anyone here who's thinking about doing Facebook ads or LinkedIn ads don't simply make one ad in a vacuum and then run it. Have like a plan, like content, have a plan strategy for your ad delivery out. Think, think a quarter out. Like when I, when I was running campaigns at, um, when I was working at Benzel and I was in-house, I was basically planning, I was planning ad campaigns by the quarter. So if I was gonna run an ad on fume extraction, I had three months worth of advertisement creative all, all measured out. I knew every single creative I wanted to run. Um, I knew how many, when I wanted to switch it up, um, I had the audience already figured out. And I basically was like, all right, every three weeks we're going, and I knew how much money I wanted to spend on it. So like plan by quarter to do stuff like that or plan by, you know, sit by six months or, or something like plan out all the different creative you want to do, plan how much you want to spend on it, plan how you want to measure it, um, kind of come up with, with hypotheses that you want to run with your audiences. Um, and then run tests, like, you know, take some of that budget, play around with a different audience, see if you get a better result, um, mm -hmm. play around with different ad creatives, see if you get a better result, but have sort of a, have an idea. You don't, I mean, just jot it down. It doesn't have to be super long, right? But have, have a plan in place for what you want to do over a protracted period of time. Don't simply come up with an idea for one ad, run it, and then, you know, sit on it for like six months. I think that's going to be your only ad. Um, you need to, you need to have more of a, more of a plan in place to do that. If you want to, if you want to run ads and, and get traction on it, it will take time for your audience to get used to seeing you over and over again with your content. And before you start really seeing the revenue result that you're going to want to see from your paid ad spending. So don't think it'll be an overnight problem. You'll get some wins every now and then, but bank for six months to nine months before you start really seeing stuff that you're going to, you can point to your, your ad strategy and go see that's working for us. So I, I would, I would just leave you with that thought and, and just to know that this is strictly, this is 100% about momentum. 
get started, build momentum, get people in your content stream, get people used to you, get people to know you. And, and eventually when you keep doing that and as you get better with your targeting, as you keep running new creative and you see what people respond to, you'll be able to iterate and your results will get a lot better as a result. Anything to add to that, Julian? No. No, all right. <laughs> All right. So some closing thoughts and resources. And please, if you guys have questions, drop them in right now. If this is the time, if you want to, if you want us to cover anything for yourself, um, resources, LinkedIn, like connect with us. We'd love to talk to you. If you have anything you want to cover with us, uh, we have another session on the 16th of November, 2 PM. We're going to talk about podcasting uh, because a lot of um, people don't think podcasting really works for B2B manufacturing. We beg to differ. And so Joe Sullivan, who's our CEO is going to actually come on with myself. Um, we both have podcasts and we'll kind of show you how to create a podcast basically for free um, for your company. Now you can use that to really do some cool accounts-based stuff to cover this a little bit in our content webinar uh, we did two weeks ago, but I'm actually going to dive a lot deeper into podcasting to make a business case for you to do it. Uh, show you guys how to do it um, pretty uh, for a, a really efficiently from a cost standpoint. And then frankly, to show you how to get it started so you can get traction with it to, to get it off the ground. So please, please join us for that. Um, and we really look forward to seeing you on that. I think you guys will find it really interesting. We'll give you a whole bunch of tools to get started with it as well. And, um, and yeah, we'll uh, look forward to speaking with you on that. So let's open up for questions. If you guys have any questions, please drop them in. I don't see any right now, Julian, though. But um, if, if anyone has any, like, please feel free to, to drop them in real quick and we'd be happy to answer them for you. I'll stick but, around. Yeah, we'll, we'll still stick around for a few minutes. <laughs> but if you guys have to jump, understand. I know it's 4, 4.11. So really appreciate your time. Um, and thank you guys. Hope to see you again in two weeks. Julian, I'm going to, I'm going to jump off really quickly because I got to handle something. I'll be right back in like one minute. Okay. All right. I'll be around. Right. I'm going to turn my video off. <clears throat> yeah. I think most people are kind of hopping off right now. So unless you guys have any other questions, um, we're probably going <laughs> to favorite manufacturing brands or influencers. Um, that's a really good question. I wish I had Matt here. This sounds like a Matt question, but uh, favorite manufacturing brands. I think one big one that I, I keep coming back to is Firetrace. Um, might even have someone from Firetrace on here, but I think they do a really good job in their marketing from a lot of different perspectives, from content, from uh, copywriting, from positioning. Um, MJ Peters is the um, VP of marketing at Firetrace. We've talked about her a few times, so um, I would definitely check them out. There's probably a lot of other ones that I'm not thinking of right now, but um, will a copy of the recording be sent out? Yeah, we forgot to say that. We always send out a copy of the recording. We'll upload that to YouTube and we'll also send out a copy of this deck tomorrow. All right, guys, we're gonna hop off. I think Matt may or may not be returning in the next few seconds. So thank you guys for joining and uh, hopefully see you guys in uh, two weeks. Bye-bye.